Welcome to the Purple Party known as Purple Nerd Channel, home for all those who geek out on all things Prince related. Barbarella was released in October of 1968, starring Jane Fonda and based on the French comic strip of the same name, created by John Cloud Forrest. The film was directed by Jane Fonda's husband at the time, Roger Vadim, with a screenplay by eight different writers, including the director and the creator of the comic strip. The film was re-released in 1977 under the new title Barbarella Queen of the Galaxy and marketed to capitalize on the success of Star Wars which was released the same year. This psychedelic acid trip of a sex space comedy was a modest hit almost doubling its $4 million budget at the box office, if you count both releases. But the movie gained a huge cult following in the 80s thanks to video rentals and its endless availability on cable, which I remember as a kid, this movie was always on the USA Network. Of course, that version was the 1977 version, which has all the nudity cut out or creatively censored to obtain a PG rating. After owning this film on Blu-ray for a longer amount of time than I would like to admit because I never actually opened it, I finally watched it. And it's the 1968 cut, which I apparently have never seen because there is a lot of nudity in this film. And trust me, I would have remembered this much naked Jane Fonda. I mean, seriously, the film opens with a 15 minute long zero gravity strip tease by Jane Fonda while all of the credits roll. The movie takes place in a unknown future and is about a space adventurer named Barbarella. She is contacted by Earth's president to find and capture a man named Duran Duran. And yes, the big 80s band of the same name got their name from this movie. So there's a little bit of bonus points for your trivia nights. In this universe, the universe is ruled by love, and there has not been any wars or acts of violence in over a century. But Duran Duran must be captured because he has created a weapon called the Positronic Ray, which has the potential to destroy the entire Earth as well as all the other planets. Equipped with space age laser guns and revealing clothing, Barbarella sets out to find Duran Duran. And she meets a cast of characters along the way and gets in all kinds of danger, which most of the time could be completely avoided. In her first run out, her ship crashes and she's captured by a bunch of evil kids that torture her with mechanical dolls that have razor sharp teeth. She is rescued by a furry man and I don't remember his name and I'm filming this at 3 a.m. and I just don't feel like looking it up. So I'm just gonna call him the furry man. She gets rescued by this furry man and she feels the need to repay him and he requests that you go ahead and repay me by making love to me. Which she is not familiar with this term because apparently sex was deemed bad. So now when you want to have sex, you take these pills. Each person takes a pill, they like touch their hands, and then like mentally you have, I guess, an orgasm. They did something similar like this in the movie Demolition Man with Sylvester Stallone, but Furry Man is not familiar with this type of act and wants to do it the old fashioned way, which at first she's a little thrown off, but she's like, hey, you know what? You saved me some from some, you know, razor sharp robots and some wicked kids so let's go ahead and do this and after they do what they do which we don't see she is pleasantly pleased and really really loves this new form of making love which by the way as far as not seeing anything this movie plays out a lot like a 70s porno film but with none of the actual action scenes if you know what i mean so she continues her adventure only to once again crash her ship on another planet, which leads her to being trapped in this labyrinth where she is assisted by a blind winged angel like being named Pygar who has lost the will to fly until she introduces him to her newly discovered physical lovemaking. And after this event, this dude is flying all over the place. We also meet Professor Ping, who has volunteered to help fix her ship. So her and Pygar break into the city of Sogo, which sits atop the labyrinth and is ruled by the Black Queen. And they're doing this 
because Professor Penn seems to think that the Black Queen will know where to find Duran Duran. Once we get to the city, we discover that the city sits on top of a black goo called the Mathmas, which is actually pure evil and has possessed everyone living in this city, leading them to excess and debauchery and not a lot of clothes. Of course, Barbarella and Pygar get captured immediately and somehow Barbarella escapes to a secret lair where she meets Dildano, who is a part of a secret collection of rebels who are planning to overthrow the kingdom. So she decides to help him as this might lead her to the person she's looking for, Duran Duran, and the leader of the rebels gives her an invisible key that will unlock the dream quarters of the Black Queen. So apparently when she's in her dream quarters, she's vulnerable to attacks. But before she can go on that mission, we get to have a hilarious scene because Dildano has never tried the pill way of making love and decides to try it with Barbarella. And this awkward, out of bounds, just weird scene is hilarious. And of course, on her way to the Black Queen's dream quarters, she gets captured and we get to meet Duran Duran. And he decides to put her in his excessive machine, which is designed to pleasure women to death. Yes, we're talking about death by orgasm here. Which apparently Barbarella is just too sexy for and actually destroys his machine. Defeated, Duran Duran goes and steals Barbarella's invisible key, takes her to the Black Queen's quarters, throws her in there, steals the Black Queen's invisible key, locking both of them in the dream chamber. So of course the Black Queen awakens and Barbarella explains to her the entire plot that's about to happen. So to stop all this from happening, the Black Queen decides to sacrifice the entire city for the two of them to live. And she does this by pulling a lever that releases the Mathmas all over the city. So there's just black goo filling up the streets of the city and her dream chamber turns into a flotation device and so they just float out on this black goo into the labyrinth right before Pygar rescues Barbarella and the Black Queen. And I almost forgot before in between those scenes uh, we get to see his you know laser gun that destroys the world and it is a hilarious plastic 1968 piece of movie magic. He kind of vaporizes a few people, but then the black goo that she released, it comes in and destroys him, his ray, and basically the entire city. But as I said before, it's okay because Pygar has rescued Barbarella and the Black Queen, and we go and see them fly out to safety and credits roll again. This film apparently had a huge impact on Prince, and his influence on him shows in his work. Aside from featuring the film in his film Three Chains of Gold, referencing the film on his Love Symbol album, sampling dialogue from the film in his song Space from the album Come, having a drawing of the excessive machine in the booklet for Emancipation, and christening his keyboardist Thomas Elm with the name Tommy Barbarella, this film also influenced the artwork on his albums, his stage shows, and his and his bandmates wardrobe. I mean, there are several outfits that he's worn throughout his career that he could just walk on set of this film and blend right in. This movie also inspired Prince's songwriting as he has several songs where he speaks of a world ruled by love with no war. Thank you for joining me on this episode. Please like and share this video. And as always, please subscribe to the channel. And if you got a moment, go ahead and check out my Patreon page. I'll have a link to that in the description down below. And until the next episode, I wish you heaven.